Hi, it's Dennis Daly. During all those years I did that weekly show for UPI Radio, I was always happy when my colleagues would contribute a segment or two. UPI Radio's Jim Lounsbury used to visit Tucson a lot before moving there, and he did this great report from what you can only call an airplane graveyard. Dennis, I'm on the edge of Davis Mountain Air Force Base, just southeast of Tucson. Those are A-10s coming in. I'm under their landing path. They train here, along with F-16 fighter pilots. Both types are big factors in the recent Persian Gulf War. The A-10 is a low-attack jet. But this air base is famous for something else. All excess military aircraft are stored here. There are now about 4,000 out there on almost 3,000 acres. And it's an amazing sight from training planes to B-52s. I got the story behind it all from retired Air Force maintenance superintendent and marketing specialist Jerry Fugere. At the present time, we have almost 3,700 aircraft here, but the misconception that people have is that the, this is the last flight of that aircraft. However, 45 to 50 percent of the aircraft that fly in here will fly back out, whether for the State Department for the Drug and Addiction Program the Forestry Service for the uh, water droppers. Uh, the most important is the drone program. We have the air-to-air simulators for air-to-air combat, the F-106 at the present time, and the F-1, F-4s will be the follow-on to the 106s, and we just completed the F-100s, uh, 312 F-100s. And, uh, of course, foreign military sales. You can't possibly rule out uh, the foreign military sales. We have a, a number of those. Uh, another important thing, it seems to me, you are the supply source uh, for parts for older aircraft in the military uh, stable, right? That's our primary mission, is to remove parts, return them back into the inventory. Uh, last year, in fiscal year 91, we turned in $813 million worth of parts and aircraft back into the active inventory. That's our primary mission. So in other words, you just don't order up a lot of new parts uh, when something breaks down. If you can find them here, you take them off the older aircraft and send them in and uh, use those, right? Yeah, most importantly, are those parts that are required, uh, the jigs and the uh, tools to make those parts are no longer in existence. And this is the only facility that would have those parts available. And you supplied a lot of needed parts to uh, aircraft, to understand, in the Persian Gulf Desert Storm War. Yes, we had a lot of B-52, a lot of F-4 parts went from here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you doubled up the shift. Uh, here you went two shifts a day for uh, seven days a week uh, during that crisis. Well, when it was necessary, of course. Uh, all those parts were ordered under my cap, which are uh, required like yesterday. So it's necessary. When, the, when it becomes necessary, we, we double up and work whatever hours it takes to provide the parts. How long does it take to get an aircraft operational? Of course, it depends on the type and what shape they're in, I guess, when they came in. Uh, to get them operational, if you need them, like F-4s, or if you had to take B-52s out again to get them flying and operating again. Well, in order to get a B-52 out, it would take an excessive amount of hours because of the number of parts that have previously been removed. and. Uh, and the availability of those parts to put back on the aircraft. So we don't really look at sending a B-52, flying it back out. However, uh, the F-4s, uh, uh, we estimate that it would take uh, 1,850 man hours to prepare a, an F-4 for flight. Of course, it will depend, uh, again, on the aircraft, the amount of parts that have been previously removed, and, uh, and the, condition of, the overall condition of the aircraft. How big an area do you have to store aircraft now? You say you have 3,700. Uh, what kind of a territory are we talking about? How much ground? Well, we've got 2,712 acres, 13 miles of fence line. And uh, with these 3,700 aircraft that we presently have on station, as new aircraft come in, of course, like I say, 45 to 50% of the aircraft fly back out again. So there's this continuous... Uh, uh, vacancy per se for mm -hmm. aircraft inbound but in the future with the amount of aircraft that we have inbound in the next three or four years 
uh, we're going to be inundated and saturated with with aircraft. Where uh, the you know our primary mission is providing parts back to the active inventory. But if all the aircraft are here in the out years, mm -hmm. it's going to reduce that requirement considerably. And you are getting more because of the cutback in defense needs, I guess. Lack of funds. Lack of funds to operate. Mm -hmm. and a lot of very sophisticated aircraft coming in. The F-15s, the F-14s, uh, basically coming in for the lack of funds to operate. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, how many personnel do you need roughly to handle all this stuff? You have, you're dealing with avionics and uh, airframes and things like that? Well, we have 661 uh, civilian personnel on board, and uh, they're multi-educated, per se. Uh, they, they can do a multitude of, of jobs referring to aircraft. They're multi-capable, in other words, I the, guess. The majority of the people are military retired, so there's very little training required because of our background. A lot of these aircraft have been worked on by a lot of the people here. I have a B-52 out there on the ramp now that I was the crew chief on in 1964 up in Bangor, Maine. You were? Right. The ultimate warrior. <laughs> so appropriately named. <laughs> <laughs> well, the B-52 has had a long life. It went into service way back in the 50s, didn't it? Right. 55. It, it touched down at Castle. And it's just now that. being phased out. Right. And a lot of those aircraft uh, that first came into service are here right now. And this is all what the START Treaty is about, uh, to uh, eliminate those nuclear carriers. And the people, uh, people need to understand that this is a complete strategic inventory that we have here. We have 292 B-52s presently on station, and they're more coming in starting Wednesday, as a matter of fact. Mm. So uh, the SALT II treaty has prevented us from eliminating any of these aircraft. But now that the START treaty has come along, the Strategic Arm Reduction Treaty, allows us to uh, eliminate these aircraft that have been static for 20 years or more. But all the parts have been removed, uh, and uh, it's been estimated that uh, the initial value of the aircraft, approximately $6 million, uh, a little over $5 million of that has been already recovered. Uh, and, and then more than 30 years in service, 35 years in service. So. Uh, uh, the taxpayers certainly get their money back on it. So we are talking economy here, then uh, saving money. Oh, and absolutely. Uh, we operate uh, well in the in the green. Uh, for every dollar we spent last year, we got twenty-two dollars and thirty-four cents back, mm. and we've gotten as much as uh, twenty-seven dollars back for every dollar spent uh, with the seven hundred seven modification. A seven hundred fifty million dollar savings. Uh, uh, taking these engines off the uh, 707s and putting them on the KC-135s, hmm. taking all the parts, there were 97 other line items that were required for the modification, but uh, all the other parts, uh, for every dollar, well, Boeing paid 850 to $950,000 for these aircraft, of which we have attained over $4 million in assets from each aircraft. Wow. So to sum it up, you're far from a, that B word that, word that people seem to stick to it put on this place a boneyard you're not that at all you as as a as you say maintenance and regeneration you're storing and sending a lot of these aircraft about again and using on the, the parts. on the contrary we are not a boneyard if if anything else if everybody looks at the at the greenback we are a gold mine mm -hmm. i don't think there is too many organizations throughout this country that makes the kind of profit and we're a non-profit organization we don't, we're not supposed to make any money, but uh, the money that we turn back to the active inventory is is uh, is a pretty good savings. Thank you, Jerry, for telling the story of the Davis Monthan Air Base in Tucson, Arizona, AMARC Division, the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center. My pleasure. UPI Radio's Jim Lounsbury at America's most famous airplane graveyard. But as we found out. Some of those planes aren't dead yet. I'm Dennis Staley.